Good night, Edith. Good night, Margo. Oh. Hold the horses. Who are you texting? My friend Avery. Avery. A- Avery. Is it a girl's name or a boy's name? Does it matter? No, no, it doesn't matter unless it's a boy. You have a 12-year-old daughter. Yeah. What is she going to think when she sees this plot line of dad hating the daughter's potential boyfriend? I think, I think we have an understanding. I think she thinks I'm a, well, she, I think she thinks I'm a cool dad, cool enough that I'm not going to be crazily overprotective. So I'm, I'm, I hope I'm not the cliche. I don't want to see you a boy. Who you do? Your bald head. Oh, yes. Good night, Agnes. Never get older. When you were working on the first Despicable Me, did you have any inkling that this would be the most successful film that you were ever a part of? <laughs> no. No, I don't think anybody did because um, it seemed fun. I liked it. I was, I was drawn to it. I thought it was a... I thought, it was an, I thought it was an interesting animated kids movie. It seemed different to me, but no, no, I don't think anyone had any idea that it would do as well as it did. You're gonna have to come with me. Oh, sorry, I- Please, I- You know, you really should announce your weapons after you fire them. Kristen, you do something kind of rare, which is you do a voice in an animated sequel, and you were also in the first one, but this one you're a totally different character. Yes. Were you surprised when they asked you back, but as someone else? Yes. I well, I knew they were making the second one. And I remember thinking like, oh man, because I, I worked at the adoption agency. I was like, well, he has the kids. Like, she's not going to be in the second one. But then they asked me to do the other character, so I was really excited. <laughs> For example. <laughs> Lipstick taser! In the first one, if I didn't know it was you, I don't know if I would have known because the voice was so different and cool. This one, from you can, you can tell I'm like, me. oh, that's Kristen. <laughs> but that's got to be an honor in a way. It, that they it was, you. yeah. I mean, we talked about doing different things with my voice, and I wasn't sure, like, oh, well, should I be a little more unrecognizable? Is that, is it distracting when you can tell? And um, we just sort of ended up on just sort of a very hyper version of myself. <laughs> We are the Anti-Villain League, dedicated to fighting crime on a global scale. I am the League's director, Silas Ramsbottom. Bottom. <laughs> Hilarious. What's the secret to playing younger because you're so convincing as this preteen or young teenage girl? Um. I don't know. I mean, I tried to think a lot, like in this movie, I tried to think about my first crush just because um, that's one of the main things Margot's going through in the movie. <laughs> and did it come back pretty instantaneously? Yeah, it did. I mean, um, the guy that I liked, like, I really liked him in like, fifth grade. Like, I thought he was my boyfriend in my mind. So, um, <laughs> and it was fun, like, kind of remembering that. <laughs> I have you now! <laughs> Benjamin, the character you play, El Macho, is, to put it not so nicely, not the most physically attractive <laughs> man in the world. How does a nice looking young man like you channel his ugly? I disagree with you. I think that El Macho, not, like, uh, not unlike a lot of us middle-aged guys, sees himself as he did when he was in his 20s. I know that look all too well. It is the look of a broken heart. Yes, he's probably 150 pounds, too heavy. He's got hair here, like that really awful upper yes, arm. Yes, he's hair. got a bit of a a bit of a mullet with you know nothing on top, the monk's tonsure and the bad comb over. He doesn't see himself as that that way. Can you do a minion voice? Be do be do be do. <laughs> One of my favorite parts of the movie. Tiki masala, tiki masala. Hello, hello. My favorite thing that the minions ever do is in the first movie um, when, like, one of the little girls is like, um, I thought your your cousin did it. And then the minion's like, what? <laughs> I think I would have a different take on the minions where they would speak English and maybe they'd just be like, hey, gals, what's going on? Are you really going to save the world? That's right, baby. Cruise back in the game with cool cars. Gadgets. How are they working? And weapons! 